OK, so we're looking at page 15, the homework. Number four and five have no commas because there are only two options. Number six, please add a comma after Jane and after Ted because you have three options. Now, if you don't add commas, the sentence grammar is still correct, but the meaning is different. If you say, please call Jane, Ted or Anna without commas, what you're saying is. When you talk about this person, Jane, please talk about her with the name of Ted or with the name of Anna. So like, please call me teacher or professor, that kind of sentence. Uh, and of course, it's very rare that you would have this kind of situation. That's why we say that the correct answer should be to add the two commas. Number seven, please call Jane, Ted, and Anna. Same thing, comma, comma. Number eight, I waved at my friend, but she didn't see me. Comma? Yes. The two halves of this sentence are both complete sentences. I subject, sorry, I subject, waved, verb, and then at my friend is the rest of the sentence. She subject, didn't see verb, me object. These are two complete sentences. When you connect two complete sentences with a coordinating conjunction, you must put a comma after the first sentence. The idea is, Originally, it was one complete sentence with a period at the end, but now you're adding something else onto the same sentence, so the period becomes a comma. This is just like uh, when we were talking about quotations. If the sentence inside the quotation marks ends with the period, but the larger sentence has not ended, you still need to add a speech tag like he said or she said after the quotation, you change that period into a comma. It's the same logic. So number nine, I waved at my friend and she waved back. Comma? Yes, the same as number eight. I waved at my friend, complete sentence. She waved back, also a complete sentence. So you have to put a comma before the conjunction. Number 10, I waved at my friend and smiled at her. Comma? No, because the second half is not a complete sentence. Smile, verb, at her is the rest of the sentence, but there's no subject. The subject is shared with the first part of the sentence. I waved, I smiled. So this part is not a complete sentence. Therefore, you do not add a comma before the conjunction. This sentence is I waved at my friend and I smiled at her. Uh, if we do like a branching diagram, it's I, and then the top half is waved at my friend, and the bottom half is smiled at her, but both of them connect to the same subject. Actually, let, let me see if, if the, we have a picture of this. Uh, if the syntax covers this. Con Conjunction, conjunction. Nope, we don't have it. Um, but if you draw one of these, that's not a good example. If you draw one of these diagrams and there is a coordinating conjunction in the middle, um, it will look like the same level you have three choices because two of those choices will be equal. OK, let's go to the next one. Number 10, I waved at my friend and smiled at her. Oh, we just did that, sorry. Number 11, was the test hard or easy? Comma? No, hard or easy, two choices, no comma. 
Number 12, my test was short and easy, but Ali's, uh, Ali's test was hard. Comma? Yes, because the second half is a complete sentence. Ali's test is the subject, was is the verb, and hard completes the sentence. So between two complete sentences, you must add this comma. Questions? OK, second half. Same. Uh, yeah, same thing. OK, number three. I called their house, but no one answered the phone. Comma. Yes, the second half is once again a complete sentence. No one is the subject. Answered is the verb. The phone is the object, so you need a comma before the conjunction. Number four, he offered me an apple or a peach, comma. No, two choices, apple or peach, uh, so you don't need a comma. 15, uh, sorry, number five, I bought some apples, peaches, and bananas, commas. Yes, more than two choices, apples, uh, sorry, apples, comma, peaches, comma, and bananas. Number six, I was hungry, so I ate an apple, comma. Yes, both halves are complete sentences connected by the word so. So you have to put a comma before so. Number seven, Bill was hungry and ate two apples, comma. No, the subject of the second half is still Bill. Uh, they share the same subject, so the second half is not a complete sentence. No comma. Number eight, my sister is generous and kind-hearted, comma. No, two choices, no comma. Number nine, my daughter is affectionate, shy, independent, and smart, commas. Yes, because you have more than two. So affectionate, which means she likes to show affection to people that she likes, comma, shy, comma independent comma and smart number 10 it started to rain so we went inside and watched television commas yes how many commas if you think one comma please raise your hand if you think two commas please raise your hand All right, it's one comma. We is a new subject, so the comma goes here. But after the and, this is a verb. The subject is still we. So we, the first thing, went inside, and the second thing, watched television. So there's only one comma here before so. Questions? All right, page 16. Same thing. Number one, Gina wants a job as an air traffic controller. Every air traffic controller worldwide uses English, so it is important for Gina to be fluent in the language. Do we need to add any commas? Yes, we do. Here, after English. After the so, it is the subject. It's an empty subject, but it's still a subject. Uh, the idea is that this is a complete sentence. So you do need a comma before the so. Number two, why do people with different cultural backgrounds sometimes fear and distrust each other? Comma? No. Fear and distrust are just two items in the list. You don't need a comma. Number three, Mozart was a great composer, but he had a short and difficult life. During the last part of his life, he was penniless, sick, and unable to find work, but he wrote music of lasting beauty and joy. Penniless means he had no money. Lasting means forever. So do we need commas? Yes, we do. We need a, quite a few of them, actually. Here. He had a short and difficult life is a complete sentence. 
And then he was penniless, comma, sick, comma, and unable to find work. Now you might be thinking, wait, these three items don't look the same. One word, one word, and then a phrase. Can you do that? Can you connect these three like this? The answer is yes, because we're only looking at the first word. Penniless is an adjective. Sick is an adjective and unable is an adjective. So even though the third one is longer, the beginning word is still the same, so they they can still be put together in a list. And then finally, he wrote music, etc. is a complete sentence, so you should also add a comma here. Number four, nothing in nature stays the same forever. Today's land, sea, climate, plants, and animals are all part of a relentless process of change continuing through millions of years. Commas? Yes, you do. You do need to add commas. Land, comma, sea, comma, climate, comma, plants, comma, and animals. This is a list of five items. Those are the only commas that you need. Everything else in this sentence is correct. Number five, people and animals must share the earth and its resources, comma, or commas? No. People and animals, two choices only. The earth and its resources, also two choices only. So you don't need a comma. Number six. Oh, this is fun. According to one researcher, the 25 most common words in English are the and a to of I in was that it he you for had is with she has on at have but me my and not. We obviously need some commas. The question is how many? It says that these are 25 words in this list. So how many commas do we need? 24. A, B, and C. A, comma, B, comma, and C. Three words, two commas, or three items, two commas. Here we have 25 items, so you need to add a comma after every italicized word. In this sentence, these words are in italics because we're not using these words. We're talking about these words. If we try to read this part, as a sentence, the grammar is absolutely terrible. But if we look at each word as an item instead of a, a part of the sentence, then we can see the grammar is just a list of items. So when you're using a word, it's different from when you're talking about a word. And to show that difference, when you're talking about a word, you should put that word in italics like here or in quotation marks. And so when you add commas, this is not a problem when you're using a pen, but if you add commas using a computer, the commas should not be italicized. Because the commas are part of the sentence, but these words uh, are being mentioned instead of used. And so the commas are not italicized, but the words are. OK, questions about these six? Great, second half. Uh, OK, it tells you to listen, but we can also just look at this from a grammar perspective. It also says that this last comma is optional, but in this class, this is a required comma. So if you see this kind of question on the final exam, you do have to put a comma there. By the way, I finished writing the final exam. Uh, I decided to indeed add a new type of question. So there will all, there will still be 10 questions. No, there will be nine questions. The first eight questions will be the same. Uh, one error per line. Circle the error 
and correct it below. Question number nine is uh, next week we're going to spend, starting next week, we're going to spend two weeks talking about complex sentences. So question nine will give you a complex sentence and it will ask you to simplify, to make it a simple sentence or more than one simple sentence. Um, and then like the grammar of your new sentence or sentences has to be correct. The meaning has to be the same, that kind of thing. Um, and then because this is a grammar class, not a vocabulary class, I do give you a Chinese translation. And in case you can't read Chinese, I also give you a vocabulary list with English definitions. So it's really only about the grammar. At the same time, Chinese grammar is not the same as English grammar. So uh, you can't just retranslate the Chinese. OK, yeah, so that's the final exam. You don't have to worry about that yet. You used to have three weeks. Number two, the price of the meal includes a salad, a main dish and dessert. Commas? Yes, you have three items. Salad, comma, main dish, comma, and dessert. Number three, the price of the meal includes a salad and a main dish. No commas, two options, don't need commas. Number four, Elias waited for his son, wife, and daughter. Three options, two commas. Number five, Elias waited for his son's wife and daughter is two options, no comma. Number six, Susan raised her hand, snapped her fingers and asked a question. Commas? Yes, this is a list. This is a list of three actions. Action number one, raised her hand. Action number two, snapped her fingers. Action number three, asked a question. So A, B and C, A comma, B, comma, and C. All three actions, uh, all three verbs have the same subject, Susan. So like if we draw another branching diagram, right? Susan, and then the top level is raised her hand. The middle level is snapped her fingers, and the bottom level is asked a question. And all three levels connect back to Susan. Number seven, red, yellow, gold, and olive green are the main colors in the fabric. OK, we have a lot of colors. Question is, how many colors do we have? Red, yellow, gold, and olive green. If you think this is five colors, please raise your hand. If you think this is four colors, please raise your hand. Correct, four colors, so three commas. Red, comma, yellow, comma, gold, comma, and olive green. Number eight, I love films full of action, adventure, and suspense. Three items, two commas. Action, comma, adventure, comma, and suspense. Number nine, I love action and adventure films. Two options, no comma. Number 10, Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. A quote from Mark Twain, Makatuwen. Did you guys read Mark Twain in high school? I remember uh, at least my Chinese textbook had a translation from him. Uh, Tom Sawyer painting the fence. No? Ah, what's going on with your education? Okay, so any commas here? Yes, there's a list. Is fatal to means it's, it will end, it will kill. So if you travel, it can help you overcome three things. Prejudice, comma, bigotry, comma, and narrow mindedness. Uh, prejudice means bias. Bigotry means actions that uh, cause harm because they are biased. And narrow mindedness is the inability to change your mind. Questions about this part? Okay, next part. Parallel structure. 
So add commas where needed. Number one, Jack was calm and quiet. Two options, no commas. Number two, Jack was calm, quiet, and serene. Serene means peaceful. Three options, two commas. Number three, the football players practiced kicking and throwing the ball and they ran laps. To run laps just means to run circles around the track. Commas? Yes, one comma here. They ran laps is a complete sentence. They is the subject, ran is the verb, laps is the object. So you need a comma before the end. Number four, the football players practiced kicking, throwing, and running. Three options, two commas. Number five, the children collected rocks and insects and flew kites. Wait, hang on. Add as necessary. Interesting. Um, so the sentence currently is correct. They collected two things, two options, no commas, and they also flew kites. Now, technically you don't need this comma, but it can help make your sentence clearer. If you don't have this comma, um, somebody who knows nothing about kites, Fengzhen, may think that flu kites are a kind of kite. Uh, and so the children collected three kinds of things, rocks, insects, and flu kites. Um, so in terms of grammar, this comma would make the sentence more clear. However, the better way to deal with this problem is to rewrite the sentence, right? Just put the first verb first, right? The children flew kites and collected rocks and insects is a much better sentence. No need for commas. Number six, sorry, number six. The teacher told the children to sit down, be quiet and open their reading books. Three options. Sit down is one, be quiet is another, and the last one is open their reading books. So three options, two commas. Number seven, the teacher told the children to sit down and be quiet. Two options, no commas. Number eight, did you know that the pupil of your eye expands and contracts slightly with each heartbeat? Uh, I see only two options, so no commas. Uh, and then the picture tells you what the pupil of your eye is. Expand means to get bigger, contract therefore means to get smaller. As a verb, as a noun, I'm sure you recognize this as the word contract, an agreement. But as a verb to contract, it can mean to get smaller. Number nine, our server, which is a more politically correct word for waiter or waitress. It's a gender neutral term, right? Our server carried two cups of coffee, three glasses of water, one glass of orange juice, and three orders of eggs on her tray. How many options are here? If you think, I don't even know how to divide this. Um, the answer is there are four options. Every kind of thing is an option. So two cups of coffee, coffee is one thing. Three glasses of water, water is another thing. One glass of orange juice is the third thing, and then three orders of eggs is the last thing. So four options, three commas. Number 10, my parents were strict but fair with their children. Two options, strict, fair, no commas. Questions? All right, page 17. 10 mistakes. OK, let's see if we can find these. Dear Mr. Mayor, I do not like complaining or to be a nuisance, which means to be annoying. But if a person is persecuted or oppressed, unfairly treated, they should be heard. As you know, the proposed new highway not only runs through my living room, but also into my swimming pool. When I spoke to the Department of Highways, the clerk was rude and know that. Take out the that he took my complaint lightly. Right, the first sentence, the clerk was rude. The second sentence, 
he took my complaint lightly, which means not seriously. There's no reason to add this that. He said I should either be glad the road didn't touch the breakfast nook or the kitchen. Hmm. OK. The either should be moved here. The correct sentence is he said I should be glad the road didn't touch either the breakfast nook or the kitchen. I demand that the issue be taken seriously by you. I have written to you three times already and you will say that you are. Oh, this should be the present tense. You say that. Um, you are working on the problem. The idea is this person, Joshua, he sent three letters and every time the response is. Uh, the mayor is working on the problem. So this is something that keeps happening. It's a general situation. It's not a specific situation. So this should be in the present tense. You say. Or you can uh, count each one as a separate situation and say you keep saying also works. That you're working on the problem. I am angry and in the mood to take legal action. This is wrong because the first one is a verb, right? I am angry. So the second one should also be a verb. But this is a preposition. So we need to add a verb, right? So you can be you can say I am angry and feel in the mood to take legal action. That way the and is connecting two verbs. Moving the highway or to cancel it entirely. This is also wrong, right? Uh, between the on both sides of the conjunction, the grammar should be the same. So this is a gerund. This is an infinitive. We should choose only one. Now in this sentence, he says that these two options are the only solutions. So these are proposals. These are how we can solve the problem. So we should use the infinitive. The infinitive is used when the situation is not certain. You can do this, you can do that. We don't know what the mayor will actually do. So to move the highway or to cancel it entirely are the only solutions. In this grammar, this is one subject. This is the second subject. Two subjects is plural, so this is R. And there are two solutions, so solutions plural. I expect you to cooperate and that you will fire the clerk. Uh, again, I expect you to do two things, right? So. Be before and after the and the grammar should be the same. I think the fastest way uh, to change this is I expect that you will cooperate. And that you will fire the clerk. Another way is to change the second one, so I expect you to cooperate and. Fire the clerk, take out the middle parts. Uh, you can even add the word to here to cooperate and to fire the clerk. Sincerely, Joshua Hickman. OK, how many corrections was that? Was that 10? How many was that? Eight? Eight like count every single one differently. How many is that? Eight. OK, so I'm, maybe we're missing something. Oh yeah, OK, sure. Very first sentence. I do not like. Uh, and then. Or right, so before and after should be the same grammar. Again, this is a gerund. This is an infinitive. 
So we should change one of these. You can change this one to to complain. Or you can change this one to being a nuisance without the two. Ah, OK, and then I found another one. <laughs> Why didn't I see this before? Not only but also is also a kind of conjunction. So the two things that you connect, the thing uh, before and after the but also should also have the same grammar. So this should have the same grammar as this. They don't. Not only verb runs, but also into preposition. Grammar, the grammar needs to be changed. The best way to change this is to move the runs through in front of the not only. Or sorry, sorry, uh, to the runs, this word. So the proposed new highway runs not only through preposition, but also into preposition. So now it, it matches. Uh, I think we got all the other ones, so that should be 10. Questions? Great. Parallelism, the, the idea that the grammar has to match in front and behind the same conjunction is a very important concept for the uh, for next week's unit about complex sentences. How do you make a complex sentence easy to understand? by using parallelism so that the reader knows what to expect as the sentence continues. So if you want to read or write long sentences, parallelism is a very important concept. Second half. Um, the so-called mistakes are also related to parallelism. The format and the grammar have to be the same if the position is the same. So, for example, the first one, best careers for parakeets, paper shredder, looks like the title. So if it's the title, you have two choices. You can capitalize every noun, verb, adjective, and adverb, or you can just capitalize the first word, and every proper noun, um, So if you capitalize all the important words, you also have to write capital C and capital P. But if you only capitalize the first word and proper nouns, you only have to write a capital B and all the other words are lowercase because there are no names in this sentence or in this line. Uh, not exactly sure why we have a paper shredder here. Suizuji. A parakeet is a kind of bird. Oh, okay, I see what's going on. <laughs> it's saying that the best kind of job for a parakeet is to be a paper shredder. Okay, so this semicolon should be a colon. Fun hao guys and mao hao. You're explaining the career, and the answer is as a paper shredder. OK, so if you choose to only capitalize first words and proper nouns, now the word paper is also a first word. It is the first word of the subtitle, Fu Biaoti. So if you only capitalize best, you should also capitalize paper. OK, and then you have five points. The grammar and the format of these five points have to be the same. So let's look at this. Every bird earns a good salary. Starts with one capital letter, no punctuation. It is a complete sentence. Next one, excellent working conditions is a noun phrase. The, the point is the conditions. Uh, the previous two words are describing what kind of conditions. So it's not a complete sentence. There is a lowercase e and there's still no punctuation at the end. So already these two are different. The third one, each bird has an assistant and. So this is a complete sentence 
But then you have the word and at the end. Uh, capital E, no punctuation. Number four, the veterinary insurance plan has a low deductible. This is a, OK, a deductible is. Um, oh God, I have to explain insurance to you. Insurance usually works in. Uh, this is how it works. When something happens and you have insurance, the insurance company will pay all or part of the money that you have to pay. If it only pays part of the money that you have to pay, the deductible is the part that you still have to pay. Uh, so the veterinary insurance plan has a low deductible, so this is a good plan. Veterinary means related to animal medicine, so e. Uh, again, a different format, right? The, this is a complete sentence, but the first word is lowercase. And the fifth one, seed breaks once an hour. This is not a complete sentence. The complete sentence should be, there are seed breaks once an hour. This sentence does not have a verb. Uh, you can also add a verb, right? Seed breaks happen or take place once an hour. Um, so incomplete sentence begins with a capital letter and also ends with punctuation. So every line has a different format. Which format should we use? Well, it's a list. Uh, usually when we look at a list, we want to make it as simple as possible. Mm. So for example, if every line has the same subject, we can omit the subject uh, and we don't have to repeat the same subject every line. The problem is there is a different subject, veterinary insurance plan. The subject is not the bird. So, um, Let's do. I mean, there's more than one standard answer, but if we want to be parallel and as simple as possible, we can. Um, let, OK, how about this? Um, there should be a way to put the word bird in this one. Oh, OK, OK, I got it, I got it. OK, we can make a list of objects. Every line will have the same subject and the same verb. The subject will be the bird or the birds, and the verb will be have. So the first one will be the birds have a good salary. The second one will be the birds have an excellent working conditions. So we can omit the repeated parts. We can just say the object, the part of the sentence after have. So the first one would be a good salary, capital A. Yeah, let's capitalize it, why not? Capital A, a good salary. The second one, excellent working conditions, capital E. Third one, an assistant, capital A. Fourth one, a veterinary insurance plan with a low deductible. Um, that turns it in, into a noun phrase plus preposition. Uh, the point is at the beginning is still the object of the sentence. This should be a a plan capital A. And then the fifth one seed breaks once an hour. No period. That way each line has the same grammar. And the format is all the same. Questions? This could be quite useful because as some of the older students know, in this department you will be making many presentations. Uh, so when you write your PowerPoint slides in English, pay attention to not just the grammar, but the parallel use of grammar and the format consistency.
Next page. OK, commas, periods and capital letters if you have to. So it's it does not let you add words. It only lets you add punctuation and capital letters. OK, number two, Asiatic elephants. Yazo uh, Shang live in jungles and forests in India, comma, Indonesia, comma, Malaysia, comma, Thailand, comma. Uh, sorry, Thailand. Are we repeating India? We're repeating. Why are we repeating India? OK, take out one of the Indias. Comma, India, comma, China, comma, and other countries in southeastern and southern Asia. Number three, elephants eat roots, comma, leaves, comma, bushes, comma, grass, comma, branches, comma, and fruit, period. Capital T. They especially like berries, comma, dates, zaozi, comma, corn, comma, and sugarcane. Number four, elephants spend a lot of time in water and are good swimmers, period. Capital T. They take baths in rivers and lakes and like to roll around in muddy water, period. No commas. Right, rivers and lakes is two options, and then take and like is also two options, so no commas. Water, period, capital T. They like to give themselves a shower by shooting water from their trunks or their long noses. Number five, after a bath, they often cover themselves with dirt, period. Capital T. The dirt protects their skin from the sun and insects. Number six, most elephants live in herds, period. An, a capital A, an older female called a matriarch leads a herd. Number seven, a female elephant is pregnant for approximately 20 months and almost always has only one baby, period. Capital A, a young elephant stays close to its mother for the first 10 years of its life. Uh, you may have started noticing a pattern. Anytime there are two nouns that don't go together, it's probably because they're part of different sentences. Number eight, elephants live peacefully together in herds, comma, but some elephants called rogues leave the herd and become mean. Period. Capital T. These elephants usually are in pain from decayed teeth, comma, a disease, comma, or a wound. Yeah, okay, this is not exactly parallel, right? Disease is a noun, wound is a noun. Oh yeah, it is, sorry, teeth. The point is the teeth. Yeah, okay, that works, that works, okay. Number nine, elephants are intelligent animals, period. Capital A, a well-trained elephant can kneel, so on their knees, comma, stand up, comma, or turn around on command. So if you tell them to do it, they can do it. Number 10, elephants are in danger of extinction, of disappearing, comma, so it is important to stop the illegal killing of elephants, period. Capital T, they are killed most often for their ivory, the material of their tusks, xiangya. Questions? All right, let's take a 10 minute break and we'll continue on page 19 after the break.
All right, page 19. Commas, periods, capital letters. Again, don't change the words. All right. Um, we didn't experience any delays for the first hour, comma, but near Chicago, comma, uh, because near Chicago is a place. The sentence really begins with we, so there should be a comma here. We ran into some highway construction, period, capital T. The traffic wasn't moving at all, period, capital M. My friend and I sat in the car and waited, period, capital W. We talked about our jobs, comma, our families, comma, and the terrible traffic, uh, and the terrible traffic, period. OK. Uh, capital S. Slowly, comma, the traffic started to move. Period. Capital W. We noticed a black sports car at the side of the road. Period. Sports car, Paulta. Capital T. The right blinker, so the light that blinks when you turn. Huangden, San Huangden. The right blinker was blinking. Period. Capital T. The driver obviously wanted to get back into the line of traffic, period. Capital C. Car after car passed without letting the black sports car get in line, period. I decided to do a good deed, comma, so I motioned for the black car to get in line ahead of me, period. Capital T. The driver of the black car waved thanks to me, comma, and I waved back at him, period. Capital A. All cars had to stop at a toll booth uh, where you pay, so fating, a short way down the road, period. I held out my money to pay my toll, comma, but the toll taker just smiled and waved me on, period. Capital S. She told me that the man in the black sports car had already paid my toll, Period. Capital W. Wasn't that a nice way of saying thank you? OK, questions? All right, next page. Adding commas and periods and capital letters don't change the words. Number two, the boys walked, comma, and the girls ran. Number three, the teacher lectured, period, capital T. The students took notes. Number four, the teacher lectured, comma, and the students took notes. Number five, Elena came to the meeting, comma, but Pedro stayed home. Number six, Elena came to the meeting, period, capital H. Her brother stayed home. Questions? Right, next part. Um, periods, commas, capitalization. Again, don't change the words. OK, starting from number one, the second part. Jamal had to go to the post office and the bookstore, period. I had to go to the post office, comma, the travel agency, comma, and the bank. Number two, Roberto slapped his hand on his desk in frustration, period. Capital H. He had failed another examination and had ruined his chances for a passing grade in the course. Number three, why is there a star? Uh, OK, we'll find out. Number three, when Alex got home, comma, he took off his coat and tie, comma, threw his briefcase on the kitchen table, comma, and open the refrigerator looking for something to uh, refrigerator. Period. Well, hang on, hang on. OK, so there's a question here. First of all, this the first part is a list, right? Three actions. First action, take. Second action, throw. Third action, open. So A, comma, B, comma, and C. The problem is looking for something to eat. Should belong to Alex because he opens the refrigerator uh, 
and finds him there. She's not looking for something to eat. She just got home. Um, in terms of grammar, looking for something to eat could belong to either half, uh, either sentence. These are two sentences, and this part can belong to either one. But in terms of the meaning, the situation, it probably belongs to the first sentence. So open the refrigerator, comma, looking for something to eat. Uh, comma or no comma, it depends. If you think this action is essential to understanding why he opens the refrigerator, there should not be a comma. If you think that we already know why he opens the refrigerator and that this is just extra information, then you should add the comma. Now, when you open a refrigerator, most likely you're looking for something to eat. Especially since Alex just got home, he's probably hungry. So I would add a comma because I already know why he's opening the refrigerator. It's just extra information, but both answers would make sense. Looking for something to eat, period. Anne found him sitting at the kitchen table when she got home. Now, if you want to connect this middle part to Anne, uh, you can. You can say that Anne just got home and she went to look for something to eat. And so she entered the kitchen and she found Alex there. So if you connect this part to the second sentence, it would be opened the refrigerator, period, capital L, looking for something to eat, comma, and blah, blah, blah. So there are like three answers here, depending on how you understand the situation. Number four, when Tara went downtown yesterday, comma, she bought birthday presents for her children, comma, shopped for clothes, comma, and saw a movie at the theater, period, capital I. It was a busy day, comma, but she felt fine because it ended on a relaxing note. And number five, it was a wonderful picnic, period, capital T. The children waded in the stream, so like walked around in the water, comma, collected rocks and insects, comma, and flew kites. <laughs> that looks very familiar, period, capital T. The teenagers played an enthusiastic game of baseball, period, capital T. The adults busied themselves preparing the food, comma, supervising the children, comma, and playing some volleyball. Questions? All right, moving on, page 21. Same thing. Okay, so Janice entered the room and looked around, period, capital S. She knew no one. Number two, a thermometer is used to measure temperature, period, capital A. A barometer measures air pressure. Number three, Derek made many promises, comma, but he had no intention of keeping them. Uh, as Taylor Swift said, promises oceans deep but never to keep. Number four, the earthquake was devastating, period, capital T. Tall buildings crumbled and fell to the ground. Number five, birds have certain characteristics in common, period, capital T. They have feathers, comma, wings, comma, and a beak with no teeth, period, capital B. Birds lay hard-shelled eggs, comma, and their offspring, their children, are dependent on parental care for an extended period after birth. Number six, the ancient Egyptians had good dentists, period, capital A. Archaeologists have found mummies that had gold fi uh, fillings in their teeth. Archaeologist, somebody who digs in the dirt for old stuff, in British English and even some American English, it is spelled A-R-C-H-A-E-O-L-O-G-Y, uh, but some Americans Omit the A in the middle. Uh, both spellings are fine. Questions about these six? All right, moving on. 
Yeah, same thing. Okay. Butterflies. A butterfly is a marvel, period. Capital I. It begins as an ugly caterpillar and turns into a work of art, period. Capital T. The sight of a butterfly floating from flower to flower on a warm, sunny day brightens anyone's heart, period. This comma tells us that warm and sunny are the same kind of adjective. If you have two adjectives that are the same kind, uh, instead of writing and, you can put a comma, but only if you have two. If you have three, it has to be comma, comma, and. But you can just say warm and sunny. Anyone's heart, period, capital A. A butterfly is a charming and gentle creature, period, capital C. Caterpillars, Mao Mao Tong, eat plants and cause damage to some crops, comma, but adult butterflies feed principally, which means mainly, on nectar from flowers and do not cause any harm, period, capital W. When cold weather comes, comma, some butterflies travel great distances to reach tropical climates, period, capital T. They can be found on every continent except Antarctica, Nanji, because they are so colorful, oh, sorry, period, capital B. Here, new sentence, capital B. Because they are so colorful and beautiful, comma, butterflies are admired throughout the world. Questions? All right, next page. Same thing. Uh, on Earth, line two, on Earth is water, period, capital I. It occupies more than 70% of the Earth's surface, period, capital I. It is in lakes, comma, rivers, comma, and oceans, period, capital I. It is in the ground and in the air, period, capital I. It is practically everywhere. Water is vital because life on Earth could not exist without it, period, capital P. People, comma, animals, comma, and plants all need water in order to exist, period, capital E. Every living thing is mostly water, period, capital A. A person's body is about 67% water, period, capital A. I was looking, right? Is this a list or is it a sentence? So we're talking about a person's body, then we talk about a bird, then we talk about most fruit, but there's no conjunction here. So it's not a list, it's three sentences. So uh, here, 67% water, period, capital A. A bird is about 75% water, period, capital M. Most fruit is about 90% water. Most of the water in the world is salt water, period, capital N. 97% of the water on Earth is in the oceans because seawater, uh, sorry, period. I keep getting tricked by the because. Period, capital B. Because seawater is salty, comma, people cannot drink it or use it to grow plants for food, period, capital O. Only 3% of the Earth's water is fresh, period, capital O. Only 1% of the water in the world is easily available for human use. Even though water is essential to life, comma, human beings often poison it with chemicals from industry and agriculture, period, capital W. When people foul water with pollution, foul here means to make dirty, with pollution, comma, the quality of all life, plant, comma, sorry, plant life, comma, animal life, comma, and human life. Why repeat life? Why not just say plant, comma, animal, comma, and human life? I don't know, but two commas here. Human life diminishes, period, capital L. Life cannot exist without fresh water, comma, so it is essential for people to take care of this important resource. Questions? OK. Uh, next page. Ah, OK. Um, adding commas or periods, don't add words. Same thing, OK. The rain stopped, period, capital T, the birds sang. Number two, the rain stopped, comma, and the birds sang. Number three, 
The rain stopped, comma, the birds sang, comma, and the clouds disappeared. Number four, a young boy ran out on the street, period, capital H. His mother ran after him. Number five, a young boy ran out on the street, comma, and his mother ran after him. Number six, a young boy ran out on the street, period, capital H. His mother ran after him and caught him by his shirt collar, Lingzi, the back of his shirt. Number seven, the cafe serves delicious pastries and coffee, comma, and it is always crowded. Number eight, the cafe serves delicious pastries and coffee, period, capital I, it is always crowded. Number nine, the cafe serves delicious pastries, coffee, and ice cream, comma, but it is never crowded. Questions? Too fast? Great. Um, so before we continue, I do want to mention We've been talking about conjunctions as connecting two sentences, but you can start sentences with a conjunction. You can start a sentence with and. You can start a sentence with but if you want. Uh, and we'll talk about that later today, but it's something that English teachers often say. Don't start a sentence with and or but. That's not true. You just have to use it in the correct way. Okay, next part, number... What do we have to do? Add that if it means so. Sorry, add that if so means in order that. If so means therefore, add a comma. OK, so. Here, right? I borrowed some money so I could pay my rent means so that. In Chinese, what? Uh, but if so is a conjunction between two complete sentences, uh, add a comma. Number three, I need a visa so that I can travel overseas. So there's a, a causal connection here. Cause, or not causal, there's an intention, there's a purpose. Uh, the purpose for this part is the second part. The purpose for the first part is for the second part. If it's a purpose, use so that, otherwise add a comma. Number four, I needed a visa comma so i went to the embassy to apply for one this is the purpose of the second sentence therefore the first part is not a purpose you only need one the the idea is the same so you only have to say it one time number five marta is trying to improve her english so that she can become a tour guide number six Olga wants to improve her English, comma, so she has hired a tutor. The purpose is the first half, not the second half. So it's not so that. Number seven, Tariq borrowed money from his parents so that he could start his own business. Number eight, I turned off the TV so that I could concentrate on my paperwork. Questions? OK, next page 24. Ah, OK, so here's where we start combining everything we have learned. It doesn't tell you what kind of mistakes there are. Number one, by obeying the speed limit, we can save energy lives and it costs us less. OK, so this is a mistake in parallelism. These three items do not have the same grammar. This is easy to change. Because it costs us less means we can save money. So we can change this. We can save energy, lives, and money. I can't highlight this. Maybe I'll watch that. Number two, my home offers me a feeling of security, warm, and love. Okay, again, not parallel. Security is a noun. Love here is a noun, so we need to change warm into a noun. The noun version of warm is warmth, th. Number three, the pioneers hoped to clear away the forest and, okay, this should be a verb, an infinitive verb, right? To clear and so to plant or just plant crops. 
Number four, when I refused to help Alice, she became very angry and shouted at me. Became, past tense, and shouted, past tense. Number five, when Nadia moved, she had to rent an apart apartment, make new friends, and find a job. No two. You can repeat the two three times, or you cannot repeat it. Don't just repeat it one time. Number six, all plants need light. OK, take out the to have. Need light, a suitable climate, and an ample supply of water and minerals from the soil. So it's a list of three nouns, so we can take out the verb to have. Number seven, slowly and so we can change this to an adverb. Cautiously. Not being cautious. Cautiously. The firefighter climbed the burned staircase. Number eight. On my vacation, I lost a suitcase, broke my glasses, and missed my flight home. No I. Connecting three actions. Number nine. With their keen sight, which means good vision, fine hearing, so they can hear very well, and uh, we take out they have a. So keen sight, fine hearing, and refined sense of smell. Wolves hunt elk, deer, moose, and caribou. So we're connecting adjective plus noun phrases. Number 10, when Anna moved, she had to rent an apartment, make new friends, and is this repeated? No, when Nadia moved, different people, same sentence. Rent an apartment, make new friends, and find a job. Number 11, the Indian cobra snake and the king cobra use poison from their fangs in two ways. Great, so these two ways must be parallel. Number one, by injecting it directly into their prey or, ah, see, it's different. So by injecting, so we should change this to a gerund. By injecting or spitting it into the eyes of the victim. Questions? All right, next page. Again, punctuation and capitalization. My brother is visiting me for a couple of days, period, capital W. We spent yesterday together in the city, comma, and we had a really good time. Number two, capital F, first, comma. I took him to the waterfront, period, capital W. We went to the aquarium, period, capital W. We saw some, uh, we saw fears some sharks, which means scary sharks, comma. Some wonderfully funny marine mammals, comma. And all kinds of tropical fish, period, capital A, after the aquarium. We went downtown to a big mall and went shopping. Three, I had trouble thinking of a place to take him for lunch be, uh, because he's a strict vegetarian, comma. But I remembered a restaurant that has vegan food. Vegan just means completely plants. Transu, period, capital W. We went there, comma, and we had a wonderful lunch of fresh vegetables and whole grains, period. I'm not a vegetarian, comma, but I must say that I really enjoyed the meal. Four, in the afternoon, comma, it started raining, period, capital W. We decided to go to a movie, period, capital I. It was pretty good, comma, but had too much violence for me, period. I felt tense, jing zhang, when, or like nervous, when we left the theater, period. I prefer comedies or dramas, period, capital M. My brother loved the movie. Number five, we ended the day with a delicious home-cooked meal and some good conversation in my living room, period, capital I. It was an excellent day, period. I like spending time with my brother. Questions? Great, and then next one, correct the errors, add punctuation. Okay, so this is getting more complicated. The idea here is John maybe will call Mary or maybe will call Bob. So the correct sentence is John will call either Mary or Bob. Number two. Sue saw, 
not only the mouse, but also the cat. Number three, my mother talked to both the teacher and my father. Either Mr. Anderson or Ms. Wiggins is going to teach our class today. This is a choice, one or the other, so it's singular. Dan Shu is. Five, I enjoy reading not only novels, but also magazines I enjoy. I think you can take out the last I enjoy, that I enjoy. The sentence already says I enjoy, right? It's repeating itself. So, but also magazines, period. Six, smallpox, Niodou, is a dangerous disease. Malaria too, both are dangerous. Okay, so let's combine these three sentences. Both smallpox and malaria, Niuji, are dangerous diseases. Seven, she wants to buy a compact car, like a small car. So, comma, so she is saving her money. Eight, according to the news report, it will snow tonight. Period, capital T. The roads may be dangerous in the morning. Nine, while we were in New York, we attended an opera. OK, and then jump to eight at marvelous restaurants. And visited some old friends. So the subject is always we and then add three actions. Uh, because this is repeated and then this is also repeated, so we can just take those out. Questions? Next page. Same thing. Number one, as soon as the rain began, comma, as soon as the rain began, comma, the children wanted to go outdoors, period, capital T. They love to play outside in the warm summer rain, period. I used to do the same thing when I was a child. Number two, I had a cup of tea before I left for work this morning, comma, but I didn't have anything to eat, period. I rarely eat breakfast. Number three, when Jack and his wife go on vacation, comma, they have to drive or take the train because his wife is afraid of flying. Four, after Ellen gets home from work, comma, she likes to read the newspaper, period, capital S. She follows the same routine every day after work, period, capital A. As soon as she gets home, comma, she changes her clothes, comma, gets a snack and a drink, comma. We're making a list of, ver of actions, right? Changes is the first action. Gets is the second action. So snacks and a drink are two objects, no comma, comma after drink, snacks and a drink, comma, and sits down in her favorite chair to read the newspaper in peace and quiet, period, capital S. She usually has about half an hour to read the paper before her husband arrives home, five. When you speak to someone who is hard of hearing, so they can't hear you very well, comma, you do not have to shout, period, capital I. It is important to face the person directly and speak clearly, period, capital M. My elderly father is hard of hearing, comma, but he can understand me when I look directly at him and say each word clearly. Six, Jane wears contact lenses because she is nearsighted, period, capital W. Without them, she can't see from one end of a basketball court to the other, period, capital W. When one of her contacts popped out during a recent game, comma, both teams stopped playing and searched the floor for the lens. Questions? Uh, okay, next page. Number one, correct. Number two, because the lake was calm, comma, Tom went fishing. Number three, Tom went fishing because the lake was calm, period, capital H. He caught two fish. Four, when Tom went fishing, comma, the lake was calm, period, capital H, he caught two fish. Five, the lake was calm, comma, so Tom went fishing, period, capital H, he caught two fish. Six, because the lake was calm and quiet, comma, Tom went fishing. Seven, the lake was calm, 
comma, quiet, comma, and clear when Tom went fishing. Eight, because Mr. Hood has dedicated his life to helping the poor, comma, he is admired in his community. Nine, Mr. Hood is admired because he has dedicated his life to helping the poor, period, capital H. He is well known for his work on behalf of homeless people. 10. Microscopes, comma, automobile dashboards, comma, and cameras. So this is three items, not four. Automobile here is an adjective. It's describing the dashboard. Uh, so comma and cameras are awkward for left-handed people to use, period, capital T. They are designed for right-handed people, period, capital W. When lefties use these items, comma, they have to use their right hand to do the things that they would normally do with their left hand. Questions? Okay, we're done. That's the homework. <laughs> Let's move on to this week's unit. This week's unit is the conjunctive adverb. And it's a good thing that this is a very simple unit because we have 20 minutes left. Oh, shit. Sorry. Hang on. This, however, is a conjunctive adverb. A conjunctive adverb is a kind of adverb that does the same job as a coordinating conjunction. But the reason we're talking about it separately is because the grammar is different. A conjunctive, sorry, a coordinating conjunction like and, but, or can connect two sentences with a comma and a conjunction. A conjunctive adverb can only connect two sentences if you use a semicolon. You will notice that these two sentences have exactly the same words. The only difference is the punctuation. The semicolon actually is very similar to a period. A period separates two complete sentences. A semicolon connects two complete sentences. If you choose a period, you're telling the reader that there is a that each sentence has a complete idea and the ideas are not very related. If you use a semicolon, you're telling the reader that between these two complete sentences, there is some kind of connection. And the conjunctive adverb tells the reader what is the connection. So really, this is about using the semicolon. This is just a reminder that this cannot be a comma because this kind of adverb itself cannot connect two sentences. Another way to say this, in this sentence, the connecting element is the semicolon. The adverb is not doing anything. It is only telling you what kind of connection. The adverb itself is not connecting anything. Does that make sense? So you do something like this. This is wrong. Because this is two complete sentences. And there's nothing in this part of the sentence. There's nothing in the grammar here that can connect these two sentences. In this sentence, it is the semicolon that is connecting these two sentences. The adverb is not connecting anything. It is only telling you what kind of connection. 
So for every junction, there are a number of conjunctive adverbs. In fact, there are more than a hundred. And in high school, my very sadistic English teacher had us memorize all of them. I'm not going to ask you to memorize them. You only have to recognize them. So I'll give you some examples. Let me explain some of these. In Chinese, nonetheless and nevertheless are both translated as jing guan ru ci. Um, there really is no major difference between these two words, but some people will say that you should put nevertheless at the front of a sentence and put nonetheless in the middle or at the back of the sentence. So if you need one of these words and you need to put it in the middle, or the back of the sentence, you should use nonetheless. But if you need it at the front of the sentence, you should use nevertheless. I don't really care, but some people say that this is important. And then this one. Uh, this one is kind of saying, OK, let me let me type this out. These two are the same. So like in this one, despite that, that is a pronoun. You're using this to replace an entire idea or sentence. If you want to write out that idea or sentence, you should use despite the fact that something, something, something. And this is the same as something, something, something notwithstanding. Uh, yeah, these are the two major ones. Well, I guess you can there. I think there are more. OK, I thought of a few more. You know, for already is a lesser used conjunction. Let me think about this, but there are many, many for the word so. So for example, Yeah, so now you know what kind of words we're talking about. Um, let me think of, actually, why do I need to think? I can just ask ChatGPT, hang on.
you guys can also ask it if you have questions and you can't find me. But remember that it's wrong about 20% of the time. some adverbs to replace the conjunction for. Oh, those are all wrong. OK, so let's not ask ChatGPT. If I find any, I'll tell you next week. But there is one more thing I want to say about this. I said you can start a sentence with and. In this case, you're really using it as an adverb. But it's not an adverb, it's a conjunction, so you don't need that comma. The idea is like, um, usually we have a, a list, right? And sometimes you even may have a list of actions. We've seen this today. He does A, he does B and he does C. But you can also have you you can also create a list of sentences. SVO1, SVO2, and SVO3. Here's the thing. Some people think that this would be too long and complicated. So another way to do this is to separate them into different sentences. But begin the last one with a conjunction so that your reader knows that even though these are three sentences, you should look at the th these three sentences together. Um, and so for the same reason, you can also begin a sentence with but to mean however. You can begin a sentence with so to mean therefore. You can even begin a sentence with or to provide an alternative, a second choice. So it's not wrong it, to begin a sentence with a conjunction. Depends on how you use it. OK, that's the theory. Questions? Let's do some practice. Uh, this is page 26. Uh, so again, uh, add punctuation and capital letters, but in this case we also have things like therefore, something new to think about. Number four, because we forgot to make a reservation, we couldn't get a table at our favorite restaurant last night. How do we fix this sentence? Where does the main sentence begin? Yes, here, we. Everything before this we falls under the because. Because of this, main sentence we this. So there should be a comma here before the main sentence begins. Number five, the waitress kept dropping trays full of dishes, therefore she was fired. How do we fix this sentence. So the problem is with the therefore, right? You can't just throw in a therefore. There are two solutions. Both answers, you have to add a comma here. Therefore, comma, she was fired. The first answer is to add a semicolon to connect these two sentences, Jav Fen Hall. The second solution is to not connect these two sentences. Add a period and a capital T to make it two sentences. Number six, the waiter kept forgetting customers orders, so he was fired. How do we fix this? Yes, he was fired is a complete sentence, so you need a comma here. 
Number seven, Ron is an unpleasant dinner companion because of his terrible table manners. How do we fix this one? Trick question, it's correct. No need to fix. Number eight, the needle has been around since prehistoric times. The button was invented about 2000 years ago. The zipper wasn't invented until 1890. How many sentences is this? It's three sentences. The needle subject has been. Verb. And then around since blah, blah, blah is the rest of this sentence. Period. Capital T. The button was invented, blah, blah, blah. Ago. Period. Capital T. The zipper wasn't invented until 1890. And if you want, you can add the word and before the zipper. Number nine, it is possible for wildlife observers to identify individual zebras because the patterns of stripes on each zebra are unique. No two zebras are alike. How many sentences is this? Two, good. Um, it is possible for blah, blah, blah to do this because, so the sentence continues, the patterns on each zebra are unique, period, capital N. No two zebras are alike. Right, no two zebras is your new subject, so it's a different sentence. Number 10, when students in the United States are learning to type, they often practice this sentence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog because it contains all the letters of the English alphabet. OK, well, this is wrong because. There should be something separating. These two parts of the sentence. It it says it practices this sentence, but the sentence that they practice ends at the word dog. What does it say? Use periods, commas, capital letters. OK, if we can only use periods, commas and capital letters. Then we should change the colon to a comma. And then add another comma after dog. So we're surrounding this sentence with commas to tell the reader that this is. Taken together one thing in this sentence. These words are not part of the main sentence. You, these words are only part of one thing in the sentence. But really the best way to rewrite this sentence is. Um, they often practice the sentence, no colon, blah, 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 no comma, because. Uh, and then change this to a lowercase t. Um, yeah, so if you add a comma before and after, you're telling the reader that um, the sentence is this. So it, before and after this comma is the same thing. It's an, a positive comma, Tongwei But in fact, by adding two commas, you're telling the reader that this is extra information. You don't need to know this information to complete the sentence. That is wrong. You do need this information. So the best answer is to not use any punctuation. You can do an appositive without commas. So the best answer is often practice the sentence a lowercase t, blah, 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 and everything else is, and then take out the colon and everything else remains the same. OK, questions about this page? OK, homework, please go up to. Yeah, page 32. So page. Where were we? Gone to Nadia. Yeah, page 27 to 32. Uh, and then next week we'll talk about complex sentences. <laughs>